This video is brought to you by the TLDR socials. Get more from TLDR by following us on Instagram and Twitter, where we post explainers that never make it to YouTube. The link is in the description. In recent weeks and months, it was relatively guaranteed that if you looked at a poll, the Conservative Party would be in the lead, typically by a considerable margin. Well, until now. A recent poll published on Saturday put the Tories neck and neck with Labour on 38%, and last week a YouGov poll for the Times put Labour at 35%, compared to the Conservatives with just 33 so in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly what's happened, what's driving these polls, and why the Conservatives are falling out of the public's favour. And to put it as simply as possible, there are broadly three drivers behind the Tories' fall from grace. Taxation, Covid, and Afghanistan. By far and away, the recent increase in national insurance is driving many away from the Tories. Following the 1.25% increase in national insurance, the tax burden on the country now stands at a 50-year high, based on figures from the Office for Budget Responsibility and the Institute for Fiscal Studies. And this obviously doesn't sit well with the narrative that the Conservatives are the party of low taxation. Speaking to the Backbench 1922 committee, Johnson stressed that we should never forget, after all we've been through, that we are the party of free enterprise, the private sector, and low taxation. Yet it seems not even Johnson's government can back that statement. The Vaccines Minister Nadeem Sahawi, when talking to Times Radio, and speaking before the formal announcement had actually been made, refused to say that the Conservatives were the party of low taxation, rather simply stating that they were the party of fair taxation. At the 1922 committee meeting, two Tory MPs, Peter Bone and Steve Baker, raised specific concerns. Bone said, this is what Labour will be doing in power, so why are we doing it as Conservatives? With Baker following, and according to The Guardian, compared the policy to socialism. Some have even gone as far as to declare that this is Johnson's poll tax moment, a nod to when the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher introduced a flat tax on every adult, a policy that unquestionably heightened, if not guaranteed, Thatcher's political downfall. Alistair Heath, writing The Telegraph, and Johnson's former employer no less, argues in no uncertain terms that Johnson is complicit in the moral destruction of the Conservative Party. And whilst that's a fairly extreme statement to make, the gist of the matter is that, for the many Tories' electoral and political base, this tax hike is seen as simply wrong. To dive a little deeper, marginal taxation for a graduate in England now stands at 42.45%. For each additional pound a graduate earns whilst in the basic tax rate band, they will take home just shy of 58 pence. And in absolute terms, the average base rate taxpayer earning £24,100 will have to pay an additional £180 a year, working out about £3.46 a week. Regardless, the view driving Johnson's move is likely to be that, in the long run, support for the policy will increase. And on that point, the picture is quite complex. If you drill down into the YouGov poll, you find that voters are relatively evenly split. When asked, in principle, would you be happy or unhappy to pay higher taxes in order to fund more spending on the NHS, 45% were overall happy and 42% were unhappy. When the question was asked again, but this time about social care, 44% were happy and 43% were unhappy. And looking even closer at the breakdown of voter intention, we get some surprising results. In both cases, those intending to vote for Conservatives were disproportionately happier to pay higher taxes. 61% of those intending to vote for the Conservatives were fairly happy or very happy to pay higher taxes for social care, compared to just 47% for those intending to vote for Labour. Now, we do have to caveat this with two quite major points. Firstly, this is just a single poll with a relatively small sample size. But more importantly, looking at those who intend to vote Conservative automatically removes those who are unhappy with the policy and were Conservative voters, but now no longer intend to actually vote for them. In other words, it's likely support amongst Conservatives is inflated in this case. And this distinction is visible if we look at what people who actually voted Conservative in the 2019 general election have to say about this policy. 48% are happy to pay higher taxes for social care and 43% are unhappy, which is markedly less than 61%. Moving on to the next point, let's talk about COVID, as if we haven't enough already in the last 18 months. The Conservatives had been enjoying quite a considerable vaccine bounce in the polls, but with other countries around the world, and in Europe in particular, catching up, that bounce has become noticeably less springy. Much of Europe already has a very similar share of the population fully vaccinated, with Ireland, Belgium, Denmark, Spain, Portugal, to name but a few, all surpassing the UK in this measurement. That being said, in recent days there have been some quite considerable developments on the Covid front that mean that polling could go either way. The Health Secretary Savage Javid, talking to the BBC on Sunday, announced that the government had dropped plans to bring in vaccine passports for entry into nightclubs and large events in England, something the Covid recovery group wing of the Tory party had been pushing hard against. 
Again, on Sunday, the government confirmed that the Prime Minister would repeal powers in England that are no longer necessary from the Coronavirus Act, including powers to close down sectors of the economy, powers to disrupt education and powers that detain infectious people. And then on Monday this week, it was announced that the UK's chief medical officers had formally recommended that all children between the ages of 12 and 15 be offered one dose of the Pfizer vaccine. So we may have to wait and see if these changes swing polls back in the Tories' favour. But finally comes the matter of the UK's withdrawal from Afghanistan, something which has split the country straight down the middle. When asked in a recent poll whether completely withdrawing troops from Afghanistan was the right or wrong decision, 39% of Brits said it was the right decision and 40% said it was the wrong one. When specifically asked whether certain politicians were doing a good or bad job handling the current situation in Afghanistan, all major politicians were lambasted by the British public. Johnson received a net score of minus 18, Keir Starmer minus 20, the government as a whole minus 21, and Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, and Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, both on minus 29. Ouch. Raab's polling in particular is far from a surprise, though. As has become public knowledge, as Kabul fell to the Taliban, the Foreign Secretary was on holiday. And whilst Raab has since stressed that he kept abreast of the situation and attended emergency Cobra meetings, it's not exactly a good look for the person in charge of foreign affairs to be in Crete at the time. And in turn, both the government and Johnson personally had to expend political capital on defending Rob, capital that has evidently lost them in the polls. Something to highlight is that the wider shift in the polls is not necessarily the fact that Labour are doing well, but rather the Conservatives are doing particularly poorly. The YouGov poll, which put Labour in the lead, also asked 2019 Tory voters what they were going to do in the next election. Whilst 53% said they were sticking with the Conservatives, down 14% from mid-August, just 5% said they were switching to Labour, which is up a mere two points. The vast majority of former Tory voters in this poll declared either a switch to another party or were undecided or weren't voting at all. And the opinion poll paints a nearly identical picture. 66% are sticking with the Conservatives and just 5% have moved to Labour. 28% are either undecided or switching to other parties. So clearly this recent polling is a fall for the Conservatives rather than a significant climb from Labour. But what do you think? Is this the start of a longer term decline? Is the vaccine bounce completely over? Or will Johnson come out of this stronger than ever? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more TLDR content. You can just follow us on the TLDR socials or go wild and follow whichever TLDR accounts interest you. Following and sharing our posts not only gets you more from us, but it also helps us out and we really, really appreciate it. And of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description. Hope you have a nice day, guys.